live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hear ye, hear ye. Welcome to Houston Life. I am Courtney Savala. You sound good doing that. Oh Hi, Courtney. God, Hi, really. my lady. <laughs> I'm Derek Shore. So glad to have you with us uh, here at the Texas Renaissance Festival. Hard to believe this all started back in 1974. This is the 48th annual Texas Renaissance Festival, and boy, has it grown. That's right. It is the largest Renaissance Festival in the United States. As we said, uh, 1974 is when it began. Over half a million people visit the fest each year. You know, there's 21 stages, 400 shops, and this all happens over 17 days. And the space is huge uh, on 55 acres of land in Todd Mission. Getting here from Houston now takes less than an hour thanks to the completion of the 249 extension and the widening of FM 1774. I got to tell you, the drive out here was a breeze. It was so easy. The new construction, the widened roads, it all makes su such a difference when you come to the Texas Renaissance Festival. Okay, so the big question is, how do they turn these woods into a world of medieval make-believe? Well, today on Houston Life, we're going to find out. We're taking you behind the scenes. It's access like no other to see how they make the Renaissance Festival happen. We're going to meet the jousting crew putting on a harrowing show in this arena every day of the festival. And while the pretense of their battle may be imagined those falls you know what guys they're real find out how these guys train and why they head to Hollywood when they aren't in the great state of Texas it is so much fun and sort of heart stopping to watch them joust also one of the biggest parts of the festival the costumes of course more than 150 of them are needed for the actors who perform here totally mind-blowing that all the costumes are made by two women over the course of four months Lauren Kelly is taking a us inside the costuming department for a sit down with the creative minds behind the festival garb. And the festival draws top craftsmen from around the U.S. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Did we say craftsmen? We checked in with the glass blower, blacksmith, and broom maker. Oh, ladies, see the Renaissance women creating works of art right before our eyes. So much talent here at the Renaissance Festival. Of course, the entertainment and food are a huge draw here. Mel Camp is over at a brand new venue that has both. She's on the stage at the Thirsty Pirate. Arr, hey, Mel. pirate stage with a whole lot more than just pirates and we are having so much fun that's what Renfest is all about stick around because guess what I'm going to introduce you to the king and queen of Renfest so this is going to be so much fun Courtney Derek I don't think I'm ever coming home <laughs> Woo! I knew it I knew it Mel you found your people have a great time we'll see you in just a bit so the festival season runs October through November but what you may not realize is putting on the festival, putting everything together, it truly is a year-round operation. It sort of has to be the amount of undertaking that's going on here. Joining us now with a look at how they make it all happen is the festival's marketing director, Carl Foy. Carl, welcome to Houston Life. Welcome to the uh, Renaissance Festival. It's, it's wonderful having you guys here. It's been a great day so far. Absolutely. We love a good field trip, and this is really great. When you think about the history of the Texas Renaissance Festival, dating back to 1974 this keeps getting bigger and better bigger and better every year every year we kind of we grow we add some new uh, new acreage to the property and and new shows and new stands and new restaurants it's 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 growing and, and getting bigger every year okay so 1974 we mentioned this is the year the magic started happening and back then you had about 33,000 visitors as Courtney mentioned earlier today the festival has now grown 500,000 visitors and what's truly remarkable is that happens over the course of what just 14 days 17 17 days of operation total so um, we, we are here full time year round just for 17 days but with half a million people or, or more um, you know which we're trending for more this year so far um, it's it's a full time job it is really great. I mean, around the clock that you guys work so hard each year to make the festival bigger and better than it was the year before. For first timers, for people saying, you know, and I'm going to head out, I'm going to do it this year, what can they expect? 
Um, they can expect uh, a lot of people out here in costume, lots of colors and sounds. Um, it's going to be very disorientating. Um, so just take a breath. Um, at the front, there's tours. If you'd like to take a tour, they'll escort you around, um, and that's a free of charge uh, thing. Um, but it just find your path and, and grab your family or your friends and, and, and just go for it. It's, it's good fun. Okay, so we Texans, we know a thing or two about sitting in traffic, right? And truly, what Courtney and I just mentioned moments ago, the, the completion of the 249 extension, that is a game changer. So for festival goers, years past, who maybe waited, you know, or sat in traffic getting here, it's a, a heck of a lot easier this year. It used to be that you had to drive through Conroe, or you had to drive through Tombow and Magnolia to get here. Those days are gone. I mean, you can still take the scenic route if you'd like, but really, 249 from Beltway 8 comes straight up to the 1770 exit, make a left, head south on 1774. We're three or four miles right down the road. Super easy. And then they doubled the size of 1774. So it's it's traffic is, is a lot better this, this time around. As Derek said, a game changer when you're headed out here. Okay, let's talk about a scene setter because where we're seated right now, the Coliseum, a lot of the action happens right here behind us. Um, and this is probably one of the most popular events to see when they're here. Yeah, this is by far the most popular thing. We have four jousting shows every single day. 11, 1, 3, and 5 o'clock. The 5 o'clock show is sort of the, the, the grand finale of the tournament. It continues on throughout the day. Um, but this is by far the most popular thing. And also we have uh, a fire show and fireworks here at the end of the night, which is just absolutely fabulous. And for first-timers, Carl, who have never been, uh, they may have questions about, should I buy my tickets in advance? How does it all work? What's your advice if someone's coming for their very first time? By far and away, go to texrenfest.com and buy them there. They are cheaper there in advance, at least $5 cheaper when you purchase there. Um, if you come up to the uh, to the gate on the day of the festival, they're going to be $5 more, plus you're going to have to wait in line to get there. So uh, once you get there to buy tickets. So just go to the website, you can buy them there, you download them right to your phone, and you walk right in, and you show your phone, and they scan it, and it's super easy. easy. Yep. It's so easy to do, and as you've been saying all this, there's all the dates and the ticket prices and all the things right there on the screen. Okay, for people saying, this is not my first Texas Renaissance Festival. They've been here a couple times. Sure. What's new this year? What's new this year? So we already mentioned Thirsty Pirate is the largest single investment, uh, private investment into the festival in its history since 1974. Um, it's a show, it's a pub, it's a restaurant. You'll love it. It's great. Um, we also have Odin's Table Wine Sampling, um, which is with our partner Hack Winery, um, which is a, a completely unique sampling experience. If you've done samplings before, you have not done anything like this before. 3D holograms. It is so cool. It is, it's it's, it's un unbelievable. Um, we also have our first ever meadery on site. So we have meads that are made here on site for the first time ever. And if you've never had mead, it's it's honey, water, and yeast. And But the, the combinations of flavors are just endless. It's good stuff. Listen, we're just about out of time, Carl. Uh, earlier, you were mentioning to us that when people come out to the Texas Ren Fest, they're really supporting small, independently owned and operated businesses more than 400 of them yeah, absolutely it's a little known it's a little known fact of the festival that when you come out here all of the restaurants all of the shops they're independently owned a lot of these people um, run online webs uh, websites for sales a lot of them travel to other Renaissance festivals throughout the country so really this is a um, um, when you come out here you are supporting 400 small businesses and uh, and and I think it's a it's a wonderful thing to do that it certainly is it's one of my favorite things to do and I have to say stress this too is that when you walk around the grounds here, you are transported into uh, back in time. Yeah. So get the memo and come in costume, dress up, and uh, kind of just feel the mood when you get here. Absolutely. The world has been stressful for the last couple yeah. of years. So if you come here, you're going to lose yourself. You're going to lose yourself with your friends and family. You're going to be transported to a world that you've never been to before. And uh, and just have a great time. It's a lot of fun. Fun for the whole family. Yep. And it does feel like we are in another world. Carl Foy, marketing director with Texas Renaissance Festival. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you for having me. And giving us the little tour. Well, listen, we can't come to the festival, of course, Courtney, without meeting the king. Uh, hello, the, the king queen. in the house. <laughs> and we hear Mel found him over at the stage outside of where else but the Thirsty Pirate. Hi, Mel. Hi, guys. I don't think I'm going far from the Thirsty Pirate. Just <laughs> saying, just saying. But look who I found, not just the king of the Renaissance Festival, but also the queen, my lord, my lady. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and being here today. It's such an honor. 
When people come here, Queen, what can they expect from the Renaissance Festival? Greetings and well met, my dear. Oh my goodness, there are so many things that they can expect. They wander in the village and there's things to eat and stage acts and just so many, so many things. And they can go to the joust. There's a joust at 11, now, one, three. Now, this is somewhere five. where they can meet you at the joust. Is Indeed. that right? Yes, I do preside over all four jousts so that you will see me at the joust and throughout the village throughout the day, as well as his majesty. His majesty. Indeed. Hello, this is just such an honor. Now, the queen was talking about the food. Right. What do you recommend here at the Ren Fest? Well, I recommend that everyone come with a, uh, a hungry stomach and an eye for beauty and love because we have 400 artisans here. We have over eight main stage with some of my favorite performers like the clan tinker behind me that you see here. As the queen mentioned, the joust, we have the falconer stage. We just have so much fun and we have theme celebrations every weekend when folks come out here. We have an Oktoberfest, a thousand and one dreams, a pirate adventure, and and all uh, Hallow's Eve and Heroes and Villains. A Celtic Christmas, a Highland Fling, and then there's a Barbarian Invasion. Oh, oh yes. lots of uh, <laughs> So much fun. Now, when people see you both at the Renaissance Festival, are they meant to bow or curtsy? Is this something we should know? Well, it, it would be proper to do so, but it's a festival day. We let them get away with it if they do not. Okay, <laughs> of all days. You <laughs> now, before we let you go, yeah. I would love it if you would both do the honour of rolling ye old prize wheel Lee, which we have over here. Oh, that would be wonderful, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. All right. So we wait a second, we are rolling the prize wheel. This is a very royal roll of the prize, ye old prize wheelie. Uh, and we are <laughs> doing this for Sally Sheba of Sugarland. Sally, are you ready? Because you could be coming to the Ren Fest. Let's do this. All right, Sally, here you go. Here it is, here it is. Renaissance tickets, Renaissance tickets, Renaissance tickets, Renaissance tickets, Renaissance tickets. You are actually going to the haunted Mayfield Manor and I think your grandkids will be very happy with that. Yes, Sally loves hanging out with her grandkids and cooking. Yeah. So I... she can get spooked with her kids at the Mayfield Manor. But you should also come to Renfest and Sally, we're going to be in touch and tell you how you can claim your prizes. So stand by for that. And of course, if you want to have the, well, not the king, that's a special occasion, but if you want to have us spin the prize wheel for you, all you have to do is jump online to HoustonLife.tv and become an insider. All right, so awesome. Well, your highnesses. <laughs> well, we we thank you for being here. We're having a great time. And if anybody wants to get tickets or find out more, they can always go to textrenfest.com. Oh, and come and join in the fun because it is a whole lot of fun here, Derek and Courtney. I think I'm going to head over to the bar. Does that sound like a good idea? Indeed. Bizarre. Bizarre. That's a great idea. Hit, Give hit. Uh, their majesties... Our regards, Mel. Have a great time and congrats once again to our Houston Life insider, Sally Sheba, for spinning the uh, Houston Life prize wheel. If you would like your chance to spin and win live on the air, you can join our KPRC2 insider program. Scan the QR code on your screen or you can visit clicktohouston.com slash insider to sign up totally free. Then be sure to keep an eye out for those insider emails. All right. Well, still to come, eat, drink and be merry from turkey legs to beer and wine we find out what's new on the menu at RenFest. And Lauren Kelly is showing us how to dress the part with an inside look at one of the most important parts of the festival, the costumes, of course. Hi, Lauren. <sighs> you guys, guess where I'm at? I'm at the costume shop at the Renaissance Festival. We're getting a behind the scenes look at how these handmade costumes are coming together for this year's festival. How do I look so far? Ah, oh, you look perfect, milady. Don't go away. Houston Life will be right back.
Welcome back to Houston Life. We are out at the Texas Renaissance Festival, and if you've ever visited, you know that the people watching really is half the fun. Oh, yeah, and you truly never know what or who you will be seeing from the traditional characters of the king and queen to fairies and pirates. We even, Courtney, had a Batman sighting. We sure did. <laughs> For the cast here at the festival, the outfits really helped to bring the characters to life, and Lauren Kelly popped into the costuming department to see how they create more than 100 handmade costumes every year. Well, you guys, this is a very special day. I'm not sure if you've ever been behind the scenes at the Renaissance Festival, but we are getting a behind the scenes look at the costumes here. And I'm here with the very special costume director, Angela, come on over here. Hello. This is the woman behind all the costumes you see here at the Renfest. Handmade, hi. hi, how are you? I'm well. You're gonna give us the ultimate tour. I am, I'd our love to. Sewing. This is actually where we do the sewing. Come on in. So let me ask you this, Angela, how many costumes do you think overall you guys are creating each year for the Ren Fest. Each year, we have somewhere between 150 and 200 cast members per season. Most cast members will repeat the character for three seasons. If we have new people, this year we had 25 new people. So I guess you could kind of say if each costume involves three to five or six pieces, then we're doing several hundred costume pieces per season. Who has the hardest costume to create? That is a perfect segue into the king's closet. What do we see here? So on this side, we have the general manager's costuming, we have the queen's costuming, okay. and we have his majesty's costume. Okay. Cool. His majesty is the one that you see on all the TV spots and everything, and he's the main host on the site. He's the hear ye, hear ye. The hear ye, okay. hear ye guy, and he is known as the king. King of Festival. Okay, okay. And she is the Queen of Festival. Okay. They're not like Henry and Catherine. They are another entity entirely. Uh, I'm just looking around this closet though. So they have multiple they have outfits. The, exactly. A themed costume for every weekend. For example, this is our Queen's new Oktoberfest skirt. Okay. Which is essentially a dirndl in shape, which is traditional German. Okay. But we've brought it up to a queen level. Oh, okay. With embroidery and fancy materials and such. Um, and right behind you, you'll see the black and silver. That is our king's Halloween costume. Oh, the king the gets right dressed up. Oh, yes. The king has a good time. <laughs> He's also got some of the best hats in the world. Absolutely, he does. <laughs> so I know I get to try some stuff on today, which I am very excited for. Can we, like, go and do that? Absolutely. Good. Tell go me where. Okay, and okay. take a left. What's a solid costume that is recognizable that I can get into today? I've got the perfect thing. The beef eaters. The beef eaters. The beef Eaters. Okay. This is their hat. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm, am I officially a beef? You are now? almost officially a beef eater. Okay. Come on in. Oh, this is your other hand. You look amazing. I can put you right at the front gate. What does an official beef eater do? How do they stand? Like this? They are greeting people at the gate. Okay. And if they see royalty, like our own King George, the owner of the festival, they would bow to the king. Okay. Um, as a feminine person, you would curtsy to the king, which is a little weird in a beef eater outfit. <laughs> do you want to look at a dress? I would love to look at a dress. <laughs> now, the first thing I want you to do is hold this. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, stand in this. So we're not really playing around here. This skirt probably that is so heavy. Probably weighs about 18 pounds. This is kind of like my wedding skirt. Uh, <laughs> Got to find the floor. Fabric. It is a beautiful fabric. It's very, very soft too. Okay. And this is a brocade okay. fabric. Brocade. And because I didn't have your size, I'm not going to be able to button you all the way in. It's okay. But I think I can get you in a temporary way. Okay. This would go over a chemise. A chemise is basically a white gown with long sleeves that goes under all the items. Okay. You'd also have on a hoop skirt, which are on these racks. Oh, which would give this some... <laughs> it some... gives it the big volume. Okay. You'd have an underskirt. Okay. And you'd have the proper headwear, which I'm gonna go get you one of those. Oh, I forgot that I still have my <laughs> beef eater hat on. This is a French hood. Okay. So this is just gonna pop right on your head here. And you would have under there, you'd have your hair all pulled back in a little netted thing called a snood which is the proper thing for the period. There is costuming available in a wealth of places. Okay. If you're creative, right. you can even go to a thrift store okay, yeah. and find a big long skirt, throw a little bodice on that that you find that's like perhaps a, a vest. Okay. Um, the easiest thing to do is actually simplicity, McCall's and butter it and make these patterns. Okay. And the fabrics you can generally get at an upholstery supply. Oh. Exactly. And if you're careful about sales and stuff and you have a sturdy enough machine, <laughs> 
you can sew your own for really a rather inexpensive price. Angela, thank you so much for letting <laughs> me try this on. Pleasure. Next time I'll come back for the clean scan when we have, you know, two days to get into it. Absolutely. But I appreciate you giving us this behind the scenes look of the costume shop. It's Absolutely. awesome. And have a great Renaissance thank Festival so this much. year. Thank you so much. Let me give you a big curtsy. Oh, mm. beautifully thank done. You. Thank you. <laughs> Lauren looked beautiful. Thank you so much. And you're welcome to join in on the fun. Dressing up as your favorite Renaissance or pop culture character is definitely encouraged here. And it truly is more fun when you dress up. I didn't get the memo today. You look great, though. Thank you. I like the braids. Okay, still to come on Houston Life, what's on tap at RenFest? We'll introduce you to a very special group of need makers responsible for bringing this traditional drink to festival goers. And there's more than just trinkets at RenFest. Next, we're going to meet the crafts women behind the glass blowing and the other hot shops. That and so much more when Houston Life returns. Welcome back to Houston Life. We are out at the Texas Renaissance Festival where each year these woods here around us turn into a fully functioning village complete with cultural neighborhoods, restaurants, and more than 350 shops. There is so much to experience. And you know, when Courtney heard about the shopping, of course we had to go shopping. And while we were stocking up on brooms and booze, Mel Camp went to meet some of the talented folks making handmade crafts the Renaissance way. And I hear she made an interesting discovery, Mel. Shopping at the Renaissance Festival is like nowhere else. There's an armory, a leather shop, need a kilt? You can get one of those too. It's not just the unusual mix of items that's so fascinating. It's the chance to watch craftsmen making them right in front of you. But wait, did we say craftsmen? At this festival, it's the women keeping the fires burning. We met up with the blacksmith, the broom maker, and the glass blower. All women who have been honing their craft for years. I learned from another broom maker, and this is my 20th season here. Using techniques that are hundreds of years old. Molding is another technique that was developed by the Romans. Jody Beauvais has been creating functional and artistic glass for this festival for over 20 years and performing entertaining demos on the process of glass blowing. By swinging the glass, I can make the piece taller and thinner. Thy king has asked me to make the queen taller and thinner, but I said nay. The popularity of these shops is proof that these once male-dominated Renaissance arts and this trade was passed down from father to son are being kept alive and well by the women of the Renfest. Renaissance boss babes. All right. I, I like, like it. <laughs> you can come meet these women and see them at work for yourself. They have demonstrations throughout every day uh, at the weekend of the festival. So during those 17 days too. Very nice. All right. From the medieval equipment to their mighty horses. We're giving you a peek behind the curtain of Renfest's premier sport of jousting. And we'll have an exciting encounter with the birds of prey. Find out how these animals do more than just entertain here at the Texas Renaissance Festival. You don't want to miss that. Houston Life will be right back. Welcome back to Houston Life. Derek Shore here along with the one and only Courtney Zavala. Well, if you're just joining us, we are spending the day getting an insider's look at the Texas Renaissance Festival. You can't come here and not eat the food. But it is so much more than typical fair food. This place truly has it all. From pretzels to turkey legs, this place has just about anything you could want to eat. Breakfast, got it. Everything on a stick? You know it. 
A quiet spot for a fancy tea party? Seriously? And Tea and Strumpets is a tea room and tea bar. Yes, they have that too. We are standing inside the tea room, which is 16 feet above the downtown part of New Market Village. And the tea room, we serve a formal tea once a day at three o'clock. And then there are the drinks. We also have a bar up here where we do full meal garnish Bloody Marys. And brand new this year, Renfest Mead. We are going to start with our King's Mead. Run by a trio of mead makers who have teamed up to bring the full mead experience to thirsty festival goers. We make everything from traditional mead, which is just fermented honey, to uh, what's called melamel, which is honey with fruit, uh, honey wine with fruit in it, and uh, methylins, which is honey with spices in it. You can try it as a flight or by the glass and get a lesson on the brewing process. The thing is we can guarantee you there's something on our wall that you're gonna like. So whether you're looking for a quiet escape from the bustling crowds or trying to experience something new, we guarantee you won't go home hungry. Yeah, going home hungry is not allowed here at the Texas Ren Fest. By the way, if you're familiar with Houston's craft beer scene, you may have recognized Dave Fougeron as one of the meadery owners. He is the man behind Southern Star Brewery, and he says he's very excited to bring this new mead venture to the masses out here at the festival. Well, cheers to that. You know, the food is in abundance, and so is the entertainment. We're talking jugglers, acrobats, musicians, jesters, and clowns seem to appear around every turn. Yes, I said clowns. You love clowns. This is perfect for you, Courtney. Careful clowns, she'll punch you. Hey, you can also try your hand at sports like archery and axe throwing or take a spin on the Da Vinci flying machines. Then there are the shows like the jousting, of course, the theater, and a fan favorite, the Birds of Prey. The festival's falconer and resident bird expert Rob Sinkler is here now with Finn. It's his Finn. And tell us about Finn. He's two years old. What a beautiful bird. Welcome to the festival. Thank you. This is Finn. He's a two-year-old Harris Hawk. Harris's Hawk, as he's properly called. He's a part of our show. He's one of the stars. Uh, and he's a part of our family-friendly show. We have four shows daily, and it's a family affair for us. Uh, my wife and my daughter all participate in the show. And it's um, a, a really close encounter where guests can experience the wind beneath their wings and enjoy a, a really fun afternoon out in the festival. It really is mesmerizing to see the show. And, um, you know, this is really about educating the public. Uh, when we talk about Finn, only two years old, he's so beautiful. Um, how often do you train or, or what's the process to go through this to be able to put on this show? You know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of work that goes into it on the back end uh, when we get them in. Sometimes they come in from rehabilitation centers mm -hmm. where they've been injured or they have some mental incapacity that makes them unreasonable to the wild. Uh, we take them in, we train them to do certain behaviors. Uh, it's their natural behaviors. They don't do ride bikes, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, but um, we train them to do the natural behaviors so that guests can experience the, the wild birds um, and see what they would do out in nature. Uh, from attacking simulated leather lures to what it looked like uh, to attack prey, to see what that might look like, uh, to flying right over their heads, to doing aerial acrobatics, uh, to high-speed demonstrations with uh, one of the fastest animals on the planet, which is a falcon. Uh, you get to see that all right here at the Texas Renaissance Festival. It is really cool. And Rob, I know for a lot of the attendees here, like you mentioned, this is a rare opportunity to see a bird like Finn here so up close and personal. What's the response from the fans in the crowd? It's a hoot. They have a great time. Uh, it's a, a lot of foul humor, I might add. <laughs> ah, I get you. It is. It really is. It's a good time. Everybody gets to come out, enjoy the show. Um, we we put in a, a good day of entertainment. At the end of every show, we give the I guess uh, uh, an opportunity to actually uh, get close and have the photo taken with the birds, ask questions. It's really what we call edutainment. Uh, it's an educational, entertaining program where we can actually get up close, talk about their life histories, actually talk about uh, things that are going on out in the environment with those types of species, whether it's uh, endangered species, whether it's uh, what's going on to help them, what you can do to actually help them. Uh, and it, it really helps to connect with an animal more so than just seeing it on, just on the television or just in a book. 
you get to really experience them up close and really appreciate them for what they are. They really are. I mean, up close and personal, Finn is absolutely beautiful. You've been doing this for more than 30 years with you and your family. In fact, this is my 30th season here at this festival. Oh, wow. fantastic. I've been doing this for more than 30 years, but this is actually my 30th celebration here. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Thank you. I know it is a fan favorite. Come on out to the Texas Renaissance Festival. Uh, Rob Sinclair, thank you so much. And Finn and Piper as well, who's off camera. It was great meeting all of you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, you're going to meet one of the noble knights who provides the thrill of jousting here at the festival. He reveals what it's like to gallop and charge at his opponent while commanding some majestic horses. And ahoy, me hearties. <laughs> Why, you might see some pirates roaming around inside a brand new. Welcome back to Houston Life. We're on the grounds of the Texas Renaissance Festival, taking a look behind the scenes at the people and the characters who make this place really come to life. And some of the biggest stars of the show are the jousters, of course. These men bring excitement and pageantry to the arena right behind us. And they are willing to take a hit, even fall from a moving horse. This is all, of course, to please the crowd. Of course, right? Those hits and falls, by the way, they're totally real. So how and why does this happen? And they do it day after day here, 17 days, right? Enrique Ramirez met up with the crew to find out. Before the pageantry. And before the cheers and jeers. These noble knights are preparing. I've been doing it and I, it's in my system. I love it. I, I'm married to it. It's one of the biggest rushes you're going to have. I mean, you, you put on the helm and the shield and the lance and go galloping down the arena and hit another, uh, hit your opponent and, or you get hit and fall off of a galloping horse. It's, it's definitely a rush. For 20 years, Kent Shelton or Sir Thomas, the Duke of Kent, and the Hannonless Action Theater have performed their jousting show at the Texas Renaissance Fair. We approach it like we're choreographed, like a movie would. It's all about choreography and safety, and all, although getting a horse to stick to choreography all the time is not doesn't always work, but that's our idea. And all the sword fighting and all that, it's stage combat. We call ourselves theater, but we are really hitting each other. For the next few weeks, these jousters will call these grounds home. Let's peek behind the curtain and see how they get ready for the show. This is the joust house for, or as uh, Jeff calls it, the retiring house. That's, that's an actual term of renaissance. But uh, this is where we have all our equipment, all of our costumes. This is where we get ready for our shows. As you can see, Lon is over there getting his uh, armor, getting help from his squire. We all have squires in our matching colors and they help us arm up because it's not so easy once we've got all this stuff on, especially with all these buckles and everything. Um, but yeah, here's saddles. This is our tack area. Um, okay, that's a Western saddle, but, that, but these are good true medieval type saddles here that we use. Uh, but again, this is, we need a space. We need to have all our things in it. Uh, it's a pretty sturdy place here, except for sometimes the doors fall off. Uh, anyway, uh, but this is where Germany gets dressed. There's France gets dressed. This is where Spain gets dressed. Here's his colors. And this is where me, Sir Thomas, the Duke of Kent. So it's pretty much color coded, you can see. It's also important to rehearse. And we charge at each other. We're not gonna hate you. These are flags, huzzah! One more and then we'll come to center. Now we can't forget about Sir Thomas's mighty steed. This is Comanche. And Comanche has been jousting probably about almost over, just over 10 years at least. He's one of our most sought after horses. Other jousting companies come to me and say, can we lease that horse? They know that this horse is a great horse. As you can tell by the gray in his beard, Sir Thomas is a master at the jousting arts and there are no signs of him slowing down. The thrill of doing it, the crowd, 
I mean, when you get out there and there's, this supposedly can hold 6,000 people. That's the biggest on the circuit. You know, it sounds cliche, but we're out there to please the public. And they do a great job at it. It's so remarkable to get behind the scenes, especially for the drought jousting crew. You yeah. know, to hear it all and why they want to do this. They're superhuman. Listen, when they aren't here at the festival, the jousters have another high profile job. They're also trained stuntsmen for TV and movies. That is super cool. I am not surprised at all. All right. You know what? We haven't heard from her lately. Who? Has anybody checked or seen Mel? Oh, Mel, it has been awfully quiet. Mel, if you could hear us. OK, there you are. But where? Oh, Derek and Courtney, you need to be here. Guys, pack up where you are and come here. This is awesome. I have found the Thirsty Pirate. place to be at Renfest. It is so much fun. You guys have to get down here and come and have fun with us here, everybody. Huzzah! Huzzah! We Welcome back to Houston Life. We have made our way around the corner from the jousting arena to a section of the Renaissance Festival that I think is our favorite. We found a bar, people. A bar. I've never <laughs> been to one of those, but this one looks great. It's called the Thirsty Pirate, and not only are they serving up food and drinks, but they have all kinds of really cool pirate-themed entertainment. And the family behind this concept, they have been part of the Renaissance Festival for more than 40 years, 46 years to be exact. One of them is right here, this guy, Bobby Giles, and his mom, if you've heard of the empanada lady, you are the son I am of Lehia. Lehia Giles, that is correct. And we want to welcome you here to the Thirsty Pirate at the Texas Renaissance Festival, which is based in 1522, coming back to the fantasy land that we have. This is the 500 year celebration of Magellan traveling the world, and we built this place in part of that honor of them going around the world. And now you're going to come into a place that's just an island paradise, and that's what we want to present to y'all as an island paradise. In a bar, of course, where you can have go R for the thirsty pirate. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it is so perfect. And Bobby, you do this alongside, of course, your sister. This is a family affair. Your mom's here, but your mom really has this incredible story attached to the Renaissance Festival. She has been here for this is her 46th annual year that she's been here consecutively for 46 years at the Texas Renaissance Festival. She's affectionately known as the Empanada Lady. We call her the Queen Lehia also, but we also know her as the Empanada Lady. That she does a fantastic job, and we're behind her reins and whatever she's done. So we love we love the mother and we love what she's done and gave us an opportunity to create the Thirsty Pirate. Now it's one of the uh extra places that she has. It's really cool that you and your sister Sharon get to work alongside your mom. And for those who are familiar with the empanada lady, Ligia, she started with a small empanada kiosk. It has now grown to nine different buildings, right, around the Renfest? Yeah, and let me go ahead and say it's 13 buildings. 13? Fact, not even nine, it's wow. 13. And so she's been an instrumental portion of the festival, and she's also always, her life is dedicated here to the festival. And this is part of her legacy that she's given us the opportunity to build this. Okay. Okay, when we come here, what can we expect? We know that you've got tons of drinks and beer, but there's also entertainment here. When we when you come here, expect to be into another world. And actually, we're going to go into the Renaissance period, and this is what the idea of coming here is all about. You get to leave all your problems at, at, behind at the door. You walk in here, and the creator that made this place, King George Coulomb, made this place especially for the patrons to come here and enjoy it and, and, and see what it's like, you know, because actually it is a Renaissance, and you get to feel good. It's that feel-good feeling. You come in, enjoy the bar, all the other amenities that they have, the entertainment. It's untold amounts of entertainment and everything you can imagine that makes it very much a place to come and enjoy with your fam with yourself, your family, and all your friends. Bring them all over and go, R for the Thirsty Pirate, what we have here. So. <laughs> well, and it's quiet right now. Uh, Enrique, our photog, is getting a shot, a bird's eye view. We're on the upstairs level of the Thirsty Pirate. Two levels, beautiful wood carvings. And again, I know it's quiet now, but this place gets rocking. 
uh, it gets rocking. We fill it up. We have a capacity inside the Thirsty Pirate for about a thousand people, which is unbelievable. We can set about 700 people inside the Thirsty Pirate and have about enough room for at least three to 400 people standing. So whenever it's full, it's full. Okay. Well, I know there's people thirsty at home. I saw Jello shots on the menu. What else do you have? <laughs> you name it, we got it. It's all about enjoying yourself and being entertained, and that's what we're here to do. Uh, hopefully, everybody can enjoy it, have a great time, and take back memories and tell all your friends, hey, let's go to the Thirsty Pirate. Let's go to the Texas Renaissance Festival. Let's get away from all the stuff that we do every day and enjoy a few hours to come out here. So. Bobby, it's clear that a lot of time and money and love was put into this space in this building. I was chatting with your mom earlier, and she mentioned that this was sort of your vision. You designed this place from the wood carvings to the beautiful uh, tables, the bar height tables you have in here. How long was this brewing before you were able to see it come to life? You know, it's kind of hard to say, but it's been brewing for 46 years, you know, so ever since my mom here, I had an opportunity to be here with them, look at the stuff, and now we have an accumulation of all the stuff that we brought is here in this beautiful place that we built. We actually took about eight months of construction, and we've done it up till this point is where you see. So. Bobby, congratulations on those 46 years. By the way, turn that number around. That's 64 beers on tap, an assortment of bar food, seating for more than 500 people, and this huge, large pirate-themed stage as we were just looking at. I got to tell you, it's loads of fun. It's beautiful, too. One of the best views here at the Renaissance Festival. Bobby Giles, I'm getting kind of thirsty, so uh, can we try all 64 beers? You sure can. we got to start now, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're going to head downstairs for there that. There you go. Oh my goodness, Derek and Courtney back here with you from the Texas Renaissance Festival. We've made all kinds of new friends today. We want to remind you that the festival runs through Sunday, November 27th. That is right, 17 full days. For more information, you can go to texrenfest.com or give them a call 1-800-458-3435. Get those tickets now, buy them online and have a great time. And a beautiful day for some juggling, some sword swallowing, some beer. Mel Camp, you know, she's been having way too much fun. And look who made her way over, the one and only empanada lady herself, Ligia's in the house. You must be so proud, 46 years here at the festival. Yes, yes, my lord, 46 years. I love when you call me my lord, my lady. Uh, what is your favorite, like, must-have drink item? Because Courtney is very picky. I think this meat is wonderful. The meat? Very good, yes. Well, it looks like we're pouring over here, so let's give it a try. Jerry, you need one. Okay, Sharon, thank you very much. Huzzah! Huzzah! Huzzah. 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 And prost to our Polish friends Nostrovia. as well. Nastrovia. <laughs> Nastrovia. <laughs> Nastrovia, okay. Very good. Mm. Perfect on a hot day. Oh, it's nice. It's nice and sweet, nice and sweet. Hey, I want to direct your attention over to our jugglers here. I mean, these people, round of applause really for all y'all because you do such a good job. The Clan Tinka! <laughs> And nothing says Ren Fest like a good old accordion music playing. I love the accordion. Mel Camp. <laughs> all right. Okay, Mel Camp, you got to tell us what you think. This is your very first I, Texas Ren Fest. I'm never going home. I'm moving in. There's a whole campsite around the corner, and I'm going to move in for the next seven weeks or so, or forever and ever and ever. I'm never going home. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I have to say, I do really like the mead, but I think it would give you a wicked hangover if you drank way too much of it. Oh, no hangovers <laughs> allowed at the but Renaissance this is, Festival. This is local mead, isn't it? Yes. This is the King's Mead. This is a local mead out of... Um, out of Conroe. So we have a couple different varieties here too, right? Yes, that what is we correct. We, this is the King's Mead. This is the official King's Mead of the Renaissance Festival. We have the Thorns Huzzah. Mead, which is made in uh, Page, Texas. And we also have the Camelot Mead right here, which is in a California one. Very, this very is nice. This is how you do it. This, this is how you, is do, how it. you do it. <laughs> and by the way, word, uh, word of advice, right? I mean, you got to come and spend the entire day here. So come early, make a bunch of new friends, spend the day, and uh, just have a blast. Drink a lot of water, too, in between. You know what? And beer. I will tell you, we talked about this earlier today and uh, on the show about how easy it is to drive here from Houston. Of course, we have uh, new road construction on 249, 1774. It's so easy, less than an hour. And remember, 
remember when you come out to the Texas Renaissance Festival, you are supporting more than 400 independently owned and operated businesses. Even though the Ren Fest happens for a limited time during the year, these people work so hard all year long to bring it to us. We are so lucky to have this festival in our Woo. own backyard. And hard to believe, Courtney and Mel, that 1974, this all began with 1974. just- 1974. 1974 <laughs> with just 30,000 <laughs> Visitors. And today, more than a half million people make the trek up here to enjoy this uh, wonderful festival. Again, as we said, 17 days every year, the Texas Renaissance Festival happens here on the grounds. It's 365 days a year that they work to plan this for all of us to have the fun. TexRenFest.com or 800-458-3435. For Derek and Courtney signing off.